Hello. Hi. Hi. Thanks so much for talking to me again. No worries. Um, How's I. It going? Sorry. How's it all going? Yeah, it's okay. It's quite stressful as it normally is during the end of term, but it's go. It's going okay. It's going okay. It's just juggling that with writing a dissertation. Um, kind of has its moments. How are you? Um. Yeah. Fine. Good here. Yeah. Good. Um. You might have a baby crying in the background. <laughs> no problem, no problem. <laughs> um, just if I could, I've just got a list of a few questions. Um, if I could just run through them, maybe. Um, yeah, of course. Okay, uh, some of it will kind of repeat a bit from last time. I just, I, apologies for that. Um, no worries, that's fine. So let me start with... Um, What what does sleep paralysis mean to you? What what can you can you just summarize your personal experiences? Um, okay, so uh, I started. Um, I probably was getting sleep paralysis experience sleep paralysis experiences from when I was quite young. Um, I remember a few that I, before I knew what sleep paralysis was, like waking up, um, f f uh, thinking that. I was sort of half in a dream and I thought that there'd been a tidal wave and I was buried under um, like half a mile of sand because um, I couldn't move. And uh, I had another um, very alarming kind of experience where I, was, I went to sleep on a friend's sofa and um, I, I woke up and I, I, she was standing over me just giving me the most sinister look while I was kind of struggling in and out of sleep. And the next day, she said that she that she hadn't come into the room, and I, and that really scared me because I was like, why is she lying? Why is she telling me she wasn't in the room when I know that she was? Um, yeah. And and so as I was um, as I kind of went through life, I had those um, kind of experiences quite a lot, and then um, I, I went through a period of insomnia, and I was getting started getting sleep paralysis a few times a week. Um, by that point, I knew what it was. Or I knew that there was a thing called sleep paralysis, um, and um, and it was linked to these kind of experiences that I was having. Um, but they would um, include things like um, I would feel cat, a cat walking along my back, along my body, a, a black cat. Um, I knew that it. I, I thought it had climbed jumped in through the window but I was not on the ground floor I was a few floors up so I don't know like my brain wasn't obviously wasn't working that well um uh and then sometimes I'd have sort of hallucinations like um oh, like big kind of hovering monstrous creatures in the room um or people sometimes people in the room uh talking um uh or animals Sometimes there was a little horse once, <laughs> um, and uh, and it was accompanied usually by what what would come first would be a sort of a sort of electric buzzing f feeling and sound, um, maybe mechanical kind of sounds, um, and a sort of a tingling, sort of um, fizzing feeling um, all over all over my body, and a, a realization that I was very alert, very awake, but also kind of almost completely asleep at the same time okay great thanks um do you know what triggers it for you um for me it's usually if my sleep patterns have been disrupted by um anything so I, I have I have patches of insomnia um when I get insomnia I get sleep paralysis um uh sometimes if I'm sleeping in an environment that I'm not comfortable um like if I'm away from home um, or if I'm waiting for somebody to get home, um, if for whatever reason I'm, I'm sort of still quite alert when I when I drop off to sleep, it can happen. Um, or if um, if my my body's been disrupted by something like jet lag um, or travel, it's more likely to happen as well. Or stress, but that's kind of linked in with the insomnia thing. Okay. And do you ever have an indication before you go to bed at night that you are going to experience this? If I if if it gets to 
you know, about three or four in the morning and I haven't slept yet and I'm tired, um, there's a good chance that I might have some sort of a screwy experience, um, sometimes sleep paralysis or kind of weird lucid dreams or something. Um, that's really the only times that I'd know that it's on the cards is if I, if I know that I'm really overtired, um, and I'm trying to get to sleep and I, I start to feel, I think what can happen is if I start to feel not like I'm, if you're aware of yourself going to sleep, if I can feel my body shutting down to sleep, but my mind is still alert, which sometimes happens when I'm, when I'm very exhausted. So I mentally won't be going to sleep, but I physically will. And then I know that I'm getting into dangerously close to sleep paralysis territory. And then I have to make a decision about whether I wake myself back up again or whether I take the risk because I need sleep that badly and just let myself drift into it. Okay. And what about after the experience? Did you ever record that? Have you ever kind of recorded it or what is the... Uh, well, I probably did while I was doing the project. Um, I, I certainly wrote down quite a lot of stuff, which I can send you about, about the experiences that I'd had. Um, it's a... Um, I don't know, it's one of these things that the more you repeat them, the more they become kind of stories and the less close they are to the experience that you actually had, I think. Um, yeah. Because the, the experience itself is so, so, like a dream, is so strange and mysterious and difficult to put into words. Um, and um, And so much of it is about sensation and emotion rather than what's actually happening. Yeah. How how do they or how have these experiences affected you? Um when I was getting it quite badly, it interfered with my um confidence in sleeping. So you get into a bit of a cycle where if night times are you know, a bit of an adventure, <laughs> like you don't you just don't know what's gonna happen when you go to sleep. Um, and you're very tired, then you become a bit scared of going to sleep. You just can't, I'm just like, oh, I can't face this happening again. I'm too tired. And so then you can, you know, you can get into a spiral of, um, of insomnia. I think that's happened, certainly happened to me in the past. Um, I think I used to be quite afraid of, quite afraid of getting trapped in one. I used to have a lot of false awakenings, um, which which would go on where I'd be in a dream or sort of sleep paralysis. I'd wake up out of it, but then I'd, I'd think I'd woken up, but then I'd be in another one. <laughs> and this had happened. Sometimes it felt like it went on for hours. Um, and they were the worst because when you're in them, they feel like they feel like they're going to go on forever. And then you might wake up and it's only been half an hour, but it's felt like a day. Um, so I used to be quite scared of that stuff because it had a real impact on, you just didn't want to get trapped in one of them because it, it was awful. It was horrible. Um, but at the same time, you you know, you got to go to sleep. Um, I think I have I have generally better sleep patterns now. Um, and uh, I think that sometimes also um, they can be affected by things like drinking. If you're drinking a lot, um, you might be more likely to have them. And um, but then you know, if you're having creepy experiences at night you might be a bit more inclined to have a drink to help yourself get to sleep so I think these things can all feed into each other um and you wind up in a place where it's very hard to then disengage from it and get, get out of it again yeah absolutely uh can you talk me through an example of just one time you had sleep maybe a particularly um memorable yeah um let me think of one that's going to be kind of clear to communicate um uh sorry it's been a while since i wrote all these down no. it's been a while since i had one actually um so i guess um i woke there was one where i woke up and there was a um sort of a creature hovering near the end of my bed it was a, kind of like a spider but big 
um, but not really like a spider. It looked more like a blob um, with eyes, uh, and it and and it was um, kind of dark, like a dark mass. Like in the morning, I, I think um, I remember describing it as like a sentient tumor, um, but 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 large, the size of a beach ball or bigger, um, and. Uh, and it was down by the end of my bed, and and I just knew that it was, it was sentient. It had its own, it had a consciousness, and it had a sort of intent. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, I've got to get out of this before this thing moves. Um, so it was like a race against time, really. Um, but I was struggling with this feeling of pressure, intense pressure all around me. It feels like the air is thick. You know, it's like thick with um, static electricity. Um, uh, and so everything is, there's just interference everywhere. You can't, there's no clarity. You can't think clearly about how to actually break out of it. Um, and at that point, I knew what sleep paralysis was. So I think I knew what was going on. I just, even though I knew what was going on, I urgently needed to get out of this experience before this creature woke up because he was terrifying. Yeah, absolutely. And um, obviously I'm looking particularly at the kind of multisensory part of it. So is it a multisensory experience for you? And how can you pick out particular examples of like sounds or sensations? Mm. Yeah, so I... what. Well, if I get it now, I'm much more likely just to get auditory hallucinations. So doors slamming, people's voices, um, crashing sounds, um, high pitch sounds, um, uh, sometimes kind of um, machinery. Um, uh, but then also, yeah, in the past, that's been accompanied by... Um, very strong kind of tactile um hallucination so feeling of um pressure feelings of movement sometimes um uh feelings of this kind of electric feeling all over your body um and um and and and, and visual hallucinations of seeing the room around and but, but a changed version of the room around you um, I don't personally get um, olfactory hallucinations, but some people do. Some people find they can smell things. Um, and um, some people have really, really strong um, sensations of being like pulled out of the bed and thrown around the room um, or, or, or levitating. Um, and it's never that extreme for me. I do sometimes manage to crawl out, feel like I'm crawling out of the bed, but it's like I'm crawling through treacle. Um, you know, it's like uh, it's like you're sort of in a. It's not like a dream where you can do things. It's like you've got no agency over the, the room you're in. I mean, I think a trick that people say is try and turn the light on, and often the light switches won't work. Things like electric things won't work, and that's how you know you're in one of these experiences. Um, but they can be, you know, they can, they can really vary. I think one thing that I learned about sleep paralysis from talking to a lot of people is that the experience is actually very, very diverse. Yeah, absolutely. And you talk about auditory hallucinations. So what, could you speak a little a bit more specifically about what things you have the experience, what you think you used to hear? Um... People talking, people's voices, very, um, very particular voices, you know, like that feel like they're coming from real people, not necessarily people who exist in my real life, but people who seem to have personalities, accents, intonations, um, uh, slamming doors, um, crashing sounds. Um, high pitched ringing, um, maybe rumblings, uh, 
I've, I've also had just like really mundane conversations.